sometimes I create mood boards for photo shoots. Um, and it's, I'm taking inspiration for all kinds of things around me. I read and look at blogs um, just because I wanted to stay fresh. I wanted to be my interpretation of, of the story and, and, and sort of creating the whole story on my own. So I've torn out, I look a lot at fashion magazines to sort of get um, a sense of colour, shape, um, light. So this one I tore out um, and I love the, the sort of colour scheme here. So this is the colour scheme we're going to go for to, today. Um, the colours I love is sort of this ochre colour and uh, so it's going to be very rustic, this is very elegant. So a lot of times you know you'll tear out images and it won't necessarily be that we're going to, we're not going to recreate the scene but there's element of this photograph that I'm going to take out and work with. And also here it's the sense of natural light um, and also all the darkness around is very moody. Um, so obviously there's not going to be any people involved but we're taking elements from this photograph uh, and working with it. Um, when it comes to composition, I've just given some examples from Instagram shots as I see there's a I usually tend to use if I'm setting up a quick scene I tend to use sort of the element of three um, and there's different interpretations of three. Here's obviously um, Water and pestle some garlic and some pepper. There's the element of three. There might be more pieces in there But the main elements are three same here with the scissor and um, um, some spring onions. So there's all sort of elements of three that might help you when you set up that if you have too many things on the table, you know, just go back to sort of thinking of, all right, number three, how can we create that scene? For the shoot, we're going to style today in my kitchen. It's a breakfast scene. And according to the tear sheet that we had on the mood board earlier, it was sort of ochre colors. It was very natural lit. It was dark and moody and a bit rustic. Um, so that's sort of the scene I'm setting today and I've to chosen different props that have the same colour scheme, that they all complement each other, not too many patterns um, or too many colours that sort of knock each other out and so that the food can um, take centre stage. So I have draped the kitchen walls here in black but that's mainly because I want to stop light because we're going to be working in moody, darker side of food photography. Um, the backdrop is fairly important and today I've chosen an old barn door um, just to keep things very sort of quiet and calm there and then we could add elements of colour and the ochre colour that we saw in the tear sheet earlier. If you don't have sort of a lot of fabric to drape around your kitchen, these boards are really great, just sort of black on one side and, uh, and white on the other, easy to sort of bounce a bit of um, fill light in on your food and also to stop light. Um, in order to create that dark and moody photography. I think when it comes to setting the scene and bringing, telling this visual story about our breakfast scene and bringing it to life, it's sort of leaving things a little bit natural and raw. Of course, in your project, you can use as minimalistic and clean as you want, but for this purpose, since we are creating a rustic breakfast scene, I've left sort of, you know, butter, a little bit, you know, it's not completely wiped and perfect, it's got some edges and bits. And I think sort of crumbs of the bread falling a little bit out, some spill, don't be so worried, just have fun and incorporate that into making the scene feel more alive and realistic. So the hero of the day, our bread. Sprinkled some flour on top, just because I wanted to have that freshly coming out of the oven sort of feel to it. And also I want to add some elements of life to the setting. First shot will be an overview shot. So I'm just going to go up here, get from up high, capture enough of negative space around the, um, the bread. Um, this is obviously all up to you, but I like to capture the roundness of the bread so that I get the whole silhouette and also the shadow that it casts on this side. Just for simple reasons, I'm just using one lens today. Um, that's a 50 millimeter, and it's a good all round lens. When you travel, you do food photography, sort of a good all-round um, and also minimal investment if you want to begin as a photographer. I keep playing with different heights and obviously you can be cropping later if you feel like oh that was too far off. I think when you when you shoot when I shoot this it will be the same with the DSLR or the, or, the, or the iPhone. It's all about finding the right angle and of course when you have your phone it's a lot easier you don't have to adjust anything you just sort of tap with your finger. There's a lot of different apps. I just shoot with the in-house camera that it comes with mainly because I just want things to go fast. Um, so again, it's just trying to trying to find your find your angle. And I always shoot in square because everything I shoot for Instagram is always on um, shot in my iPhone. And then I find it hard if I shoot in a normal rectangular photo mode. 
and then later cropping in you're like oh gosh I didn't get enough or uh, but then if you shoot in square you know that you've got everything you need. We've had sort of the face down on the bread we've captured the, the introduction image if you'd like to to our story and uh, the part two we'll be working on very muted colors again like we did on the first shot so we're just going to bring in those elements um, again you know keeping the crumbs that fall off the flower keeping it all there and um, again this is sort of you know obviously the triangle and that's a very easy setup so when I'm going to capture the scene I'm trying to find the angle that where does the light hit uh, a need to hit in order to tell the story because if it's all in the in darkness and I've just sort of this part is in catching light the most most part of the story is happening in darkness so I need to find sort of where that edge edge is and again I had my hand out sort of seeing where here light disappears here it is same on the table you just sort of try around right here there's a line of light and dropping off so this is where I think I would be begin to sort of play with it most of the things I want right now is in light. Um, so if you want to then create it a little bit moodier, you would push it back so that maybe light hits right in the middle. And it's all about playing around and finding the right angle. So we're going to set scene number three. We've cleaned out what we did in scene one and two because I want this to be sort of where everyone sits down and enjoys um, their breakfast, the bread, the orange juice. So we're going to set all that up um, as a breakfast table. And as I'm setting this up, What's kind of important to keep in mind is um, the height and how you're going to shoot it. If I'm going to shoot this from above and down and you, um, you will need to think about how high and how low the elements are. If I'm going to shoot it from the side, do you want the jug to be the same size as your glasses? So it's all about playing around having fun and, and trial and error. And so I'm just going through one of the, some of the shots that I've taken with my iPhone during um, the setup of setting one, two and three. I'm um, going through sort of which ones I like the most, um, finding where sort of you find the story and this is before I've edited any of them. Um, I usually try to really get it the way I want in the phone before I edit because then I know that wherever I do editing is just enhancing what's already there. So here I would have definitely um, ex underexposed a little bit more which I will do when I edit and I always sharpen um, and then finding sort of what, I love how you can see the flower. So I use Fosco a lot. That's just because they have the, the tools that I, that I like. Um, it's an easy platform. They've got a lot of templates that are already there, um, filters to put on that I really enjoy working with. So I could just take any of these. And I know from the get-go I won't really put, most of them I don't put a filter on. All I do, which I could do in Instagram now, I guess, is just sharpen it. It's all very subtle, yeah. Like, add a bit of skin tone to this. It's only because I know it's a little bit red. I don't want it to be too desaturated. I want to add some, some tone to it. So the bread, again, looks alive. Do a little bit of vignette to just, again, enhance the moodiness. And there we go. So basically all I've done is just sharpen it, underexpose it a bit, and add vignette. And if it doesn't have enough sort of color in, um, I would add some color to its cheeks. We've already created a scene here in the cottage, um, created our breakfast scene, and um, now we're gonna take a lovely walk and end up in the pub where we're gonna document a scene using the same elements, light, visual storytelling, and composition in telling the story, documenting it in one shot.